So, let's go over some of the bigger off-season moves that have happened so far. Okay, let's see. Jimmy Butler to the Timberwolves. Okay. Paul George to OKC. Paul Millsap to Denver. Okay, that's three All-Stars. What else? Jeff Teague to the Timberwolves. Okay, he's not that great, but I need a fourth to add to this list. So yeah, the East lost four All-Stars. Some current and some from recent years. So the East got even weaker than it already was, and I will have a video out tomorrow about the weakness of the Eastern Conference, and it's going to be a very depressing video. But in today's video, I will be a little happier as I talk about the East and how it is not doomed, and why we should in fact be looking forward to what the Eastern Conference has to offer in the future, and the teams that will make up that future. The first team I will be talking about is a huge dark horse to be a good team in a few years. The New York Knicks. Now look, I don't need you to leave a comment. I'm fully aware that the Knicks historically have been garbage, and this season they were total garbage. And I expect the garbage trend to continue for a little while. But this video is about the future, not the present, and with Kristaps Porzingis, I think if just one more future star is added, the Knicks will be a great team in the future. Porzingis is on the path to be one of the best players in the NBA as a deadly scorer, but also one of the top tier rim protectors in the NBA. And their recent pickup of Frank Nielakina looks like a future star as well. Just from a physical standpoint, he's a 6'5 point guard with a 7'1 wingspan, which is the longest wingspan of any point guard in the NBA. So, just physically he's there, but I'll admit he is a project. But that's the same thing that was said about Kristaps Porzingis and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Also, there's Willie Hermana Gomez, who is an old school big that isn't plagued with the same issues that a lot of old school bigs are, aka he's not slow, and he's shown promise as a mid-range shooter. So with those three, and two or three future lottery picks, they have a decent foundation for the future. Next, the team that we will expect to contend in a season or two, the Milwaukee Bucks. I mentioned Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's already a borderline top 10 player, and if he isn't yet, I expect him to elevate himself to that next year. Besides for him, I think Thon Maker with a lot more minutes next season will show himself to be a future star player as well. Malcolm Brogdon just won Rookie of the Year as a second round pick. He seems like a great two-way player who is versatile offensively. The huge question mark with these guys is Jabari Parker. Jabari was making huge strides in his game this season before he took too many strides and tore his ACL for the second time. Luckily, his game doesn't rely on athleticism a lot, which I know sounds weird to say, but actually... Jabari scores a lot using his size against smaller players or his quickness against slower players as he's basically a walking mismatch. He gets plenty of posters, but it's not like that's all he can do. And his three-point shot has went from non-existent to a weapon for them. So if he's able to stay on the floor, he looks like a future star as well. And Chris Middleton is a perfect complementary player to start at the two as a shooter and defender who can create a bit as well. So their starters are pretty much set as long as Jabari stops his trend of injuries, and I think this team will be a future contender. And finally, the Philadelphia 76ers. Let me just go over their starting lineup. Markel Fultz, J.J. Redick, Ben Simmons, Dario Saric, and Joel Embiid. So first of all, Markel Fultz. He's a 6'4 point guard who is probably the most complete player that has ever been drafted. And I fully believe that because there is literally no major flaw in his game. Even LeBron can't say that as his lack of a jump shot was a reason that some people said that the Cavs should have gone with Melo in the 2004 draft. Obviously that was the wrong opinion, but still, even LeBron had flaws going into the draft. Fultz can shoot. Fultz can attack the basket, he can score off ball, he can play make, and he can defend. And he's going to be a star in this league. Ben Simmons is a huge question on this team and how well he will fit in with the other guys. But he's a great playmaker and he has the size to match. And that's where the LeBron comparisons come from. And if he could even be half of the player that LeBron is, that's more than enough for this team. 
Dario Saric is another question. He's a versatile four, but he's not a good defender. He's a little slow, and he was supposed to be a stretch four this season, but he only shot 31% from three this season. And he needs to improve this season, or I can see Robert Covington starting at the four for them. And finally, the process himself, Joel Embiid. Joel is a great post scorer, a solid shooter, and when he was on the floor with the 76ers this season, they were the best defensive team in the NBA. When he was off, they were the worst. That's the kind of impact that he has. Besides for these guys, J.J. Redick is the perfect shooting guard to complement them. And off of the bench, both T.J. McConnell and Rashad Holmes are going to be great role players and already kind of are. Robert Covington is a great 3 and D player off of the bench. And Jonah Bolden as a second round pick was the biggest steal of the draft in my opinion. So they have a great starting lineup and their bench is full of talent too. The process has worked and I could see these guys contending soon as well. And between these three teams, I think the Bucks and Sixers will be a huge rivalry in the future, which I look forward to. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music. That's it, Brian? Yes.